Hi, I'm Debbie, and this is The Book Ponderer. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Today, I just wanted to do a little catch-up. It is Wednesday, but I think I'm going to call this Friday Reads because I miss doing Friday Reads. Um, I've been doing recent reads, but honestly, I like the concept of Friday Reads because it's more like a weekly catch-up thing. Maybe I should just call it a weekly catch-up. I never know what to call these things. Who cares, right? So anyway, I'm just making a video today, catching you up on what I've been doing, reading, whatever. I am off work tomorrow. I get one off day a week. I work graveyard, so that means today at the end of a 50, 60 hour week is my opportunity to do things. Um, I was out in the garden earlier. The garden is just going crazy. I have tons of tomatoes and peppers, and I think I've kind of given up harvesting green beans because I just can't keep up. Um, I have a lot of other things that are kind of ready for me to start harvesting like garden huckleberries. I want to make jam. I have some hibiscus growing um, that I want to make jam out of too and maybe dry some for tea. So um, maybe I will even be able to film a little video of some of those plants. My garden is a jungle right now. I am trying to stay up and awake in order to get things done for one thing, but also I have to go tomato worm hunting tonight because there is evidence of either a whole horde of tomato worms or a really big tomato worms, like gigantic. Um, I won't describe if you are a gardener and you probably know what I am talking about, but they're out there somewhere and I haven't been able to find them. So I actually have a black light flashlight and I go out when it is dark and shine it on the plant and the tomato hornworm lights up. And if you have not tried that in your garden, it really does work. I highly recommend it. Um, the downside is you have to go outside in the dark. Maybe that doesn't bother some people, but it's not my favorite thing to do, um, especially when my garden is such a jungle right now. But anyway, enough about gardening. Um, I Well, before I talk about the books, so I've read two books recently. Um, before I talk about those, I actually went to a bookstore yesterday. And so one of the upsides of having a job is having money and being able to sometimes spend some of that money. So I'm not really a shopper. I don't really buy very many things. I don't even really buy a lot of books, but um, occasionally I like to go browse bookstores. And so there has for a couple of years now actually been a huge used bookstore um, where you can actually like trade in your books and um, they have I think 30,000 titles or something like that um, and it's a little bit of a ways away from my house but I went out there yesterday so I got the afternoon off and um, me and my wife went and had lunch and went out there it was lovely just to be able to spend a little time together and do things that normal people do again I was a bit overwhelmed to say the least. I didn't have very much time, so I couldn't really look a lot. The prices weren't as good as I had hoped, but I will say that they will always buy their own books back. That's their rule. And they buy all kinds of books from nonfiction to anthologies. Um, they had like gardening books and cooking books and DIY kind of books. Um, they don't seem to have very many rules against things they don't buy. It reminded me a lot of used bookstores when I was a kid. Me and my dad would always go to used bookstores. We just did book things. We went to the library. We went to bookstores. We went to used bookstores. He would take paper sacks full of supermarket paperbacks, like his westerns and whatever, and we would get credit to buy more books. And I love that concept. I have not patronized used bookstores like that in a long time. Um, so I was a little bit in sticker shock, but I still, in just a very short period of time, managed to find four books that I was excited about to get. So the first one I had never heard of and absolutely know nothing about. I have already started reading it. It is very interesting to me. Um, that is this book, The Kitchen Boy. And it is a novel of The Last Tsar by Robert Alexander. It says it was a national bestseller. Um, it is about the imprisonment and execution of Tsar Nicholas and his family. Um, 
yeah, I'm not even sure if this is based on truth or not because I'm so bad at history. I don't have a clue. Um, it is a very short book. This one just called to me. And the thing about youth bookstores, like, okay, so, you know, I love my digital books. I love reading on the computer. Um, but there's something about the whole experience of a used bookstore, finding books. This is gently used. It has some, like, a little tiny bit of yellowing at the top. The book is not that old, but, I mean, it's maybe 15 years old. But um, it just feels good. It, it just, it's soft bendy yeah the next book I got is the beekeepers apprentice which I this book has just been catching my eye for a long long time um, it is a gorgeous cover I absolutely love the cover I know it's the beginning of a series um, it's the first Mary Russell novel she is I believe like this female version of uh, Sherlock Holmes which I'm not a Sherlock fan although I mean I like the TV show sometimes but um, I started reading this in the store just because it keeps calling to me. And it starts off with like a whole thing about her not knowing anything about Sherlock Holmes and having to like learn. And I was like, well, that's interesting. And I don't know if that was the foreword or if that was the author or what that was. But I was, I was just intrigued by that. Anyway. So, the next book I got is um, Tayari Jones, Silver Sparrow. I really don't know much about this book, um, but I so loved An American Marriage that I want to read more from her. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you've noticed that or not because I haven't really talked about it, but I don't always want to read authors' other works just because I really loved a book. Sometimes a book works just because it's magic. Like, it just... I think The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is that magic, and I've been hesitant to read her other books, um, Taylor Jenkins reads other books, because I felt that that book is such magic. However, I think that she still has some themes and stuff like those that are in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo in her other books. So I probably will eventually try to read those. But sometimes you read an author, like when I read An American Marriage, and you just go, this author knows what she is doing. It wasn't just that book, that story. The author captivated me with her ability to capture people. And especially in an American marriage, there was no winners. There was no easy answer. There was no easy way out. Everyone struggled. Everyone won and lost something. And I just absolutely adored that book. So... Um, for its writing, you know. And the last book I got, I debated. I love this cover. So Young Jane Young by Gabrielle Zevin. Um, she actually came here to Albuquerque a while back, and I didn't get to go. I really wanted to go see her, and I didn't get to go. Um, I have read a couple of her other books. She um, wrote Elsewhere and The Story Life of A.J. Fickery. Fickery? I never know how to say that. I thought that book was okay. I absolutely loved Elsewhere. I bought Elsewhere, impromptu, hardback, brand new, many, many years ago when it first came out. And I really enjoyed it. And it's a book that I don't hear very many people talk about. But I really loved it. This book has just been capturing my attention. The cover just feels really good again. What is it with me and cover feeling today? Um, again, blue, sort of abstract, what's not to love got a person's name on it. I mean, now you can like completely figure me out, right? I think all of these are sort of, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't lying when I said, <laughs> what draws me in? So, um, yeah, so I got those four books. We'll see what happens. Um, I have read two books this week or, you know, recently. One of those is Media Circus by Kim Goldman. So I shouldn't have forgotten her name because she is the sister of um, the Goldman, you know, she didn't even really say his name in the book, I don't think. I can't remember his name, but, um, he was the one, the guy who died along with O.J. Simpson's wife, ex-wife, um, many, many years ago. What was that, like 20-some years ago now, 25 years ago? 
Um, he was horribly murdered, and Kim Goldman has gone out and found family members of people who were um, murdered. I think they're all murdered, different kinds of murders, but I think they were all murdered, but became famous, became part of the media circus. The, the families endured a lot. Um, with the, they got very public attention, and so these are people who are willing to talk to her. I will say that the book, I bought this book years ago. It was on sale, and it caught my attention because I, I like the study of media things. I thought that's what this was going to be. I thought it was at least going to be research-based. Um, I'm torn as to how to describe this because I will tell you, I enjoyed it. I mean, it, I, I gave it almost three stars, right? I liked the book. It wasn't what I was looking for, and that's okay. Um, it's not that it had to be researched or be a study of the media or how the media works. I just wish it had been a little more transparent as to what it actually was. And what I think it actually was, was an opportunity to let these families tell their story. Um, they did not go into details. They didn't tell like a whole bunch of stuff. They were very short. And I actually didn't even really get a huge inside look. But it kind of was like this glimpse of what happened to each family and their experience with the media. Many of them were positive, so they weren't all negative, you know. It just was like she let the family say what they wanted to say. And I felt like the author, the editors, the publisher didn't necessarily have a strong editing slant. And what I mean by that, and that's a good and bad thing. I'm, I'm not passing judgment, but I'm saying there wasn't a focus that helped weave a bigger story. These were just like almost vignettes. They were little vignettes of different people who had dealt with the media because a family member was murdered. And it was, I don't know. I just, I wanted something more. I wanted to really either delve into one person and really get a sense of what they dealt with and what it was like. Or I wanted a more analytical exploration of this topic. And I didn't get either one. On the other hand, the part of me actually really empathized with these people. And I could feel in reading this book that these people needed to say what they said in this book. And they needed to have this out there. And so the empathetic part of me that wanted these people to... Um, say what they need to say and to heal and to continue that next level and to feel like they helped other people somehow, even if a small, tiny fraction. Um, that part of me was happy for them. So, um, yeah, that's how I felt about that book. And the second book I finished, I absolutely loved. And you're going to probably be surprised. I was surprised at myself, but um, it is called Grin and Beard It by Penny Reed. No relation to Taylor Jenkins Reed, I don't believe. Um, this is book number two in the Winston Brothers series. So if you're not familiar with this series, it I believe they are all standalone books. And they're kind of a spinoff of supposedly this one book, but I'm not sure it came first. I think the first Winston Brothers came first. But anyway, I've not read the first one. Each of these books is supposedly standalone novels. They take a different brother. So this family, the Winston brothers, has five brothers and one sister. And um, this one explored, oh, what's his name? I got a poor, poor name. Starts with a J, not Jeremiah. Jacob, no. Josiah, no. Jethro. Jethro. This book explores the brother Jethro. Although the others are in there. So, again, it's total cover love. I have been seeing these covers. One of my random library things where I'm browsing through the library, these covers caught my attention. And I think it's because they have sort of this cross-stitch looking pattern on the front. I think the author does some kind of knitting or something, other series. But, um, crafty based or something. And so... 
I've been seeing these books for a while floating around that they get really high reviews and I'm curious. I was curious. They look like lighthearted romances and that kind of is what it is. I don't read romances very often anymore. Um, this was a straight romance, you know, a big bearded southern boy in Tennessee. Not my normal thing to read, but I loved it. I loved it. I have to say, you know, I gave it four and a half stars because I took off half a star just because I felt at times it was a little too much. And I mean that in lots of different ways. You know, there was a little too much sex because I'm just getting old and I'm not. There was a little too much explanation of things. There was a little, it was a little too neat and tidy at times. It was a little too oversimplified at times. It was a little too dramatic. I don't know. I can tell that this author is younger than me. Um, but on the other hand, this book had really interesting themes and very positive messages. I loved the attitude of the characters in these books. I loved these people. They were fantastic. The characters who acted in ways I did not like were intentionally set there to be examples of characters that we should not like. Um, and I will say, so this book, I don't know what the others are like, because like I said, I haven't read any of the others yet. I definitely want to now. Um, the premise of this book is there is this famous Hispanic actress um, and she is going to Backwoods, Tennessee to film a movie. She is staying at an old high school or college friend's house that he's rented out to her while she's there in town and um, she is on this twisty, windy road deep in the forest and she gets lost. She pulls over. She's having a meltdown and here comes this ranger to rescue her. Insta-love. So if you do not like insta-love, stay away from this book because this book is nothing but insta-love. I happen to love insta-love so I was okay with that trope. Um, and I will say too, so, so she falls for this guy, right? And then it's this whole thing all the issues come into play there. So um, what was so interesting to me was how much this book reminded me of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And I don't intentionally, believe it or not, I don't intentionally look for ways to talk about that book in every video. It just keeps coming up because I love that book so much. And I see it connected to so many things. And this book is like this light well, the book itself isn't always like, but I mean, I even cried at one point in this book. Um, and not just because there was the typical romance stuff, but like the emotion of the depth of the truths that are in this book reminded me of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is a completely different way to tackle that same issue. But again, we have a Hispanic woman who is trying to figure out the balance between connecting with other people when she is famous and she doesn't know whether other people love her for her or if they love her because she's famous and she is true to herself beyond anything else regrets and all she is willing to face the consequences face the music but she just needs a little push to make those connections and find true love and you know I just adored it. I absolutely adored it. Um, I would say if you want something different, it's mostly lighthearted. If you want something that will definitely make you laugh, um, if you're in the mood for a cheesy romance in some ways, this was definitely on the cheese fest meter. Um, I highly recommend this book and I would be curious if anybody else who is watching my channel has read these books because um, like I said, these are not books that I think I normally read for sure, or even most of the people I watch, I don't think would ever be reading this book, but I really liked it. So, um, that's all I have to talk about today, and um, hopefully I will talk to you again soon.